Hi everybody, it's your old buddy Zoo. Now we've been reviewing a lot of consoles lately, and I got to thinking, what if I made my own console? I'm not talking about sourcing things out to PCB way or some weird factory in China. No, I'm talking about getting a mini PC and a little flash drive, putting Botticera on there, putting that in there, hooking that up to a TV or a monitor, and then I have my very own console. I'm using this Ali Waba computer for this video, but you could use any sort of old PC you have laying around. Maybe your desktop from five years ago. Maybe you go to a government surplus auction and get one of them little Dell cubes that some office drone used for the last four years, and it costs you 25, 50 bucks. But hey, you know what? Even with something that pedestrian, you can play probably up to GameCube, maybe a little bit of PlayStation 2, and cost you 50 bucks. This one's about 300 bucks on Amazon. It'll get me all the way to Switch and a lot of PC gaming, but you know, work in your budget. So why don't you grab yourself a spicy pickle? <coughs> oh, went down the wrong pipe. Anyway, get yourself a spicy pickle, maybe a soda pop, and uh, join me as I struggle to flash Botticera and make this whole project work. As I mentioned in the intro, this is a high performance mini PC from Ali Wava. Let's open her up. What do we got? Looks like you got the PC and a box of accessories. I like accessories. Get this sucker out of here. Ooh, a user manual. Now this particular PC is a U58 from Ali Vava. It has a AMD Ryzen 7 5800U processor, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabytes of onboard storage, and Wi-Fi 6 and LAN and all that jazz. Now if you click on the link and go to Amazon, you're going to say, Zoo, you lied to me, it's $430, but there's a $90 off coupon. So it takes you closer to about $330, $340, depending on what kind of Amazon perks you have. Heck, you got Prime, you might be able to get it tomorrow. They give you two HDMI cords, a little hard drive cable, okay. Uh, screws, a bracket. If you really want to get fancy, you can mount this behind your monitor. And a little power brick. Peel this dang rice paper off of here. Ooh, satisfying. What are we working with here? Has a nice feel to it. The whole top of it is uh, ventilated. You have your USB-C port, your two USB-3 ports, your power button, uh, nothing on the sides. Two USB-2 ports, LAN, and two HDMI cables on the back, and of course your little power port and then nothing on the other side. It's real easy to get into. It has four screws on the bottom. Let me get my Retro Handhelds branded iFixit. I, uh, <clears throat> I branded the screwdriver kit myself. I'm not sponsored. Let's take these screws out in super speed. <laughs> Pop that sucker off, and uh, yep, that's a computer. That's, uh, that's circuit boards. You can see here, this part is yellow. It's real easy to expand this. You just pop it up, slot your new chip in, and then pop it back down. Easy peasy. Let's close her up before I break it. So Zoo, how do I get Botticera? Well, dummy, go to Botticera.org, Downloads, and you're going to want to click Desktop PC. It's going to download the x86 version. Now this is Botticera 39. 40 is out in beta, but 39 is still the stable version as of this video. Once that's downloaded, you're going to want to extract this image file. That's going to take a minute, but when it's done, you're going to want to take your favorite flasher slash burner software. I use Win32 Disk Imager. You can use Belena Etcher. You can use whatever works for you. I use Win32. I always like to make really sure that the drive I'm flashing to is the drive I want to flash to. Let's make sure that E is my 256 card. Yes. So it's E. We verified that. Now let's go to the image file, and we're going to want to find that Botticera thing we extracted earlier. There she is. Click on that. You're going to get a stern confirm overwrite warning. And you just click yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I want to continue. And wait. Now this is pretty quick because you're just flashing the operating system. No ROMs, no BIOS, any of that. So it shouldn't take more than a minute or two. When it's done, Windows is probably going to pop up a little window that says, Oh, your Botticera drives here. And there's a couple files and a couple folders in there. But you're not quite done. And you're also going to notice it's a little small. So this is a 256 flash drive, and if you look here, it's 8 gigabytes. Where did the rest of my storage go? Aha! You have to plug it into your mini PC, boot it up, and allow Botticera to expand the drive for you. The hot key to get into the BIOS menu while your PC is booting up varies from system to system. This computer is F2, so you just hold F2 while it loads, and you get to your cool BIOS screen. There we go. Gonna want to go over to the boot, 
And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your USB-C device is the very first one on there, and then your secondary one is the hard disk. This will let you take the flash drive out and boot it as a regular Windows machine if you want to. Go over to save and exit, confirm your changes, and uh, this partitions it so fast that I had to slow it down to 25% speed. That's how fast that is. And then you're ready to load it back into your PC and throw some ROMs on there. You get your little boot screen to confirm Bodicera is on there, and then you uh, just close it down safely, eject your flash drive, and plug it back into your computer because now you gotta throw all your ROMs on there. I've done a million of these tutorials. Basically it boils down to you copy your BIOS into the BIOS folder. I can't tell you where to get those, but just use Google. And then you're going to copy your ROMs into the ROMs folder. Can't tell you where to get those. Just use Google. Or buy that weird KinHank 12 terabyte thing, and you just have them already, because that's where I'm pulling mine from. For whatever reason, when I was doing this in Windows, it took forever. So I sped up the footage, and I decided to do the rest of the stuff on the actual computer itself. In Bodicera itself, all you got to do is press F1 on a keyboard, and you get to a little file explorer. And from here, plug in your drive that has your ROMs and then just copy paste them into the folder. It goes a lot faster when you do it directly on the machine. Once you moved all your stuff over, just go close window and it'll take you back to your regular Botticera. You're basically done with the keyboard at this point. So you're gonna wanna get a Bluetooth controller or a plugged in controller, some sort of controller, and you're gonna wanna map it. I have this cool 8-bit dough uh, peach creamsicle kind of controller. I'm just gonna go ahead and pair it automatically It'll detect it here in a second. There we go. And uh, everything should work. If something's hinky, you can always go to controller mapping here on this screen, but otherwise it's pretty plug and play. Now I'm gonna connect to my Wi-Fi. I'm not gonna show you my Wi-Fi, but I will connect to the Wi-Fi. And this is gonna allow me to download updates and to scrape. If you don't have a screen scraper account, this Botticera will also lets you use the games DB. And it's really easy. You start scraping your stuff and then go get a soda pop, man. Go. Mow the lawn or something, it's going to take a while. Now that we're done scraping, I want to show you advanced game options. And this is going to let you customize the emulator for a specific system. For now, let's make sure it's on Dolphin, high performance. Uh, let's just skip this and see what happens, and then we can tweak a little bit further. Ugh, I forgot there was this stupid disco intro. Not crazy about those bezels, but... Uh, Let's see what kind of performance we can get straight out of the box, and then we'll go back and tinker. Eh, it's okay, but I don't like those bezels, and I want to verify that we're using Vulcan. So I'm going to check those two things in the menu and restart the game. Haha, <laughs> much better. It's a little laggy, but we are running at 2x native resolution, and I haven't really optimized it that much besides switching to Vulcan, so we could definitely tinker a little bit more. But the main point is, all this configuration stuff, you don't have to open up Dolphin and screw around with settings. It's all within Botticera and that advanced systems option. Die, Imperial scum! Switching to PSP, let's reiterate those advanced system options. So you're going to want to make sure you're using high performance. I mean, I mean, you're plugged into the wall, so high performance. You want to make sure you don't have bezels. You can turn those off here. Graphics API. I think Vulkan works the best for a lot of stuff. You might have to switch to OpenGL for some GameCube, and you can change your rendering resolution. PSP will play 4X. Heck, you might be able to get it to run at 4K. What do we want to do? Play some baseball? Let's do some home run derby. Let's sock some dingers. A towering home run! Straight away center field. Throw in some 4K Final Fantasy tactics. It's almost too smooth. I do prefer to leave the bezels on and switch to a CRT shader for stuff like PlayStation or Dreamcast or maybe Super Nintendo. I just like the way it looks, especially on a wider screen. But your mileage may vary. Go nuts. Stretch it to the wide screen and put one of them smeary filters on there if you want to. It's your console. Gundam slash Mech Warrior. Apparently there's no targeting system. I'm just going to have to try to lead this guy. And he jumped. Dreamcast runs fine on here, as it should on this computer. I do like the bezel and stuff like this. You gonna shoot me? Here's my shield. I shouldn't have put the shield down. Zoo, how are you gonna play 3DS on a big screen like this? Well, I'll tell you, dummy. You can set it up in that same Botticera menu to have a giant screen and a little screen, and it works pretty well. I'm running Fire Emblem Awakening here at 3x resolution, nary a stutter, but uh. But if the PC you're using is strong enough to do 2 or 3x for some of these 3DS games, you're gonna have a really beautiful time. Let's play some Wii. Uh, 
Don't like the bezels. Forgot to turn them off. Ugh. All right, let's back out and change the bezel situation. If you set your emulator and your performance and your bezels and all that once, it'll stick for the rest of the time you're using this console. So uh, it's worth it to fine tune, maybe fiddle around, find your best performance settings, and then lock them in. Get out of my way, Donkey Kang. PlayStation 2 runs great out of the box on this. You might have to set up your controller. Mine wasn't detecting start and one of the face buttons on the controller for some reason. So I hit the hotkey, that just bounced me to the emulator's menu, and I was able... Ooh, that's a good pass. I was able to update my controller settings and obviously dominate with that pass to... Who is that, Ryan Hamby? Go on, get it, son. <laughs> go ahead, take a bow, Beanie Wells. There you go. Hi, cheerleader lady. Even the super basic systems like NES or Super Nintendo, with these bezels and the right shader, they're going to look amazing, even on a real big TV. I have no idea where I am and why I'm here. That's sounds like the second day of CES after we went to that barcade. Ugh. And I guess since I've had Chrono here the entire time... Hi, Chrono! I should play Chrono Trigger. I like Chrono Trigger. If you remove your Botticera drive and turn your computer back on, it's also a regular computer, which means you can play PC games, Switch stuff, whatever the computer is capable of. I like to pick the brand new Madden game juxtaposed against those PS2 graphics from, uh, what was that, 2008? Boy, boy, things have changed. Go on and get it, Chubb. And then, of course, the elephant in the room, Switch emulation on the PC. I use Reunix. They're not going to get in trouble because no one knows what I'm talking about because I can't pronounce the name right. I'm not a huge Animal Crossing guy. I think it's because I play after everyone goes to bed. So uh, I don't get much done at like 11 o'clock at night. So I never really got into it. What did we learn? Well, Gary, we learned that if you got yourself a mini PC... Like this one from the good folks at Ali Wava, or an old beat up Optiplex you get at a government surplus auction for 25 bucks. If you have a flash drive and you have a little bit of patience, you can make yourself your own gaming console. So what's next? Well, a PC like this, you can always expand it with new memory, stuff like that. Or maybe you can paint it a beautiful shade of gray and purple and uh, figure out a way to cram a hard drive in through the top so it looks like an actual console. I don't know. Maybe get a Dremel out and cut the top of this and put a hinge so it flips open. Um, don't actually do any of that. Please don't damage your beautiful mini PC. I'm just an idiot waxing poetic to finish the video. So uh, if you like the video and you like my crazy antics, then like and subscribe. And stay tuned for more crazy antics from your old buddy Zoo and everyone here. Gary and Steve and, 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 and Quinlan and Kevin and everyone. Do you... Do you see them? Anyway, keep watching, and we'll see you later. Goodbye.